Thank you so much for joining me today, Julie. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have this conversation with you because I feel like it's one of those conversations that often business owners dread thinking about this side of the business, but at the same time, they know they need it so badly. (laughs) So I would love just to get started for you to introduce yourself to everyone and to let us know how you got into doing what you're doing now and how you work with women in business now. Absolutely. So yes, my name is Julie Baranek. I'm founder of Seven Figure Builder, and I help high achieving business owners just really take their business to the next level using tech and automation to do a deep dive into where they feel like they're bleeding time in their business and just can't seem to get ahead. And then I help do an assessment with that and figure out where those gaps are and help plug those gaps so that they can ultimately free up their time to have more time to spend with their families. So that's truly where I, my goal is, is to free up their time so that they have that flexibility and that time available to do whatever they love. Amazing. Amazing. So needed because I think we can be honestly spending so much time working on our business and it can, yeah, definitely take away from us actually having a life. So <laughs> yes. tell us, how did you get into this? What's when you share with us your expertise and what, what started this? Yeah. So my story takes, you know, twists and turns as everybody's does, I'm sure. Um, But I actually started as a registered nurse and was in high risk labor and delivery. And I did that for about 11 years, but I was always very creative and techie. So I started a business on the side doing that and helping business owners. And it just kind of escalated from there. I ended up moving out of nursing into um, IT marketing and shifted into marketing and automation. And basically my background, the short story is my background is helping um, IT consulting for pharmaceutical companies And really have just taken that expertise and that drive to help business owners to, you know, again, take their business to that next level. So I have a very uh, varied expertise and windy road that has taken me where I am, but I love what I do and love really getting to know the ins and outs of people's businesses and helping to just free them up so that they can do what they love. Love it. And I'm sure even with all of that experience, especially like in the nursing, dealing with (laughs) women in very stressful situations, you probably really have brought that into helping business owners when they're super stressed. I do. And it's so funny how much of my nursing career I actually bring with me every day. In fact, I was just having a conversation with somebody of like how they tie together. And I tend to be very even keel in the work that I do. And my mentality is so odd as it sounds is at the end of the day, nobody died right? Like it's not that dramatic. And, you know, having been in those life and death situations, it puts business in a whole new perspective where you can really accomplish a lot and you don't need to get bogged down and stressed out about the details. Love it. Love it. So good. So when you think about tech, like honestly, like it would be something that you probably have to help women to overcome their fear of tech or when it comes to automating their businesses and things like that. What do you see most people are stressed most about? Uh, Knowing where to start. I think people, like you said, are really scared of it and not knowing where to begin. And so often our businesses grow organically and it just creates a disaster behind the scenes where you don't have that data architect mind to help you orchestrate it. And so then people oftentimes go to try to use their data to market and it's a disaster behind the scenes. So that's where, you know, I'm able to come in and help people really sort out and untwist that mess that they might have and clean it up so that they have that clean flow of data. They know what they're collecting from people and be able to utilize it um, in a way that actually makes sense and creates that, that personal high touch experience. Mm, okay, good. Okay, awesome. So I think like when it comes down to this type of stuff, like you, you can often find that business owners are creatives or they're visionaries. And so the tech side is not something that they come that comes naturally and they find it very challenging. So is like when you say where where to start, is that first place to start to actually just to start automating your time or to uh, audit your time? No. So the first place would be to ask for help, (laughs) because if you just start to automate things, you could speed up a mess and actually create more harm than good. So it's really important that before you start automating things, that you have somebody really take a look at what you've got and make sure things are clean and make sure your data coming in is clean and that you can, you have something to start with, right? You have something to use and you're not just speeding up a mess. Mm. <laughs> I can imagine people listening to this going, oh my goodness, I was just going to try and start and do it on my own. 
because that's what we do in business, right? Like we're literally yeah. trying to figure it all out on, on ourselves instead of actually going, oh, hang on a minute. Maybe it would be worthwhile, especially on the tech side to be like, let's get someone else in. Cause I know that I've definitely tried to do that in the past and, and mess things up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, even as simple, like email marketing campaigns are huge and so incredibly helpful for your business. But if you do dear first name, right, as easy and simple as that sounds, and you're missing the first name field for half of your data, you're now looking very awkward to your clients as you're sending out that automated email campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And so, okay. What, what do you, what do you wish business owners knew about tech? Um, that with the right help, you can do incredible things, um, that it's not as scary as you think. And it's not, you don't have to start from scratch that there's so much that you already have in place that you can utilize. It just, sometimes it helps to get that, that second perspective to say, you know, have you thought about this? And even if you have some sort of automation, there's a thousand other things that can really help free up your time. You know, even if you have one email campaign, like there's so much that you can add to that to really, to really free up your time that you don't have to copy and paste things from system to system. You don't have to hire a VA necessarily. Like there's so much that you can take off your plate that just really makes your life easier and you don't have to be scared of it. <laughs> Mm, good good and I think you're so right like I think that we get so scared of it and I think that it's like that lack that wanting not wanting to relinquish control <laughs> a little bit of it as well and so let's let's play a bit of a scenario so let's just say like there's a, an entrepreneur there that is has actually done quite well like you said organically built their business and they've probably got some systems already in place so imagining they would have like an invoicing system in place they'd have CRM in place they have possibly, you know, scheduling apps and things like that for their socials. Once they've got those foundational kind of pieces in place, what would you then start looking at next? So yeah, if you have those systems in place, that's a really good place to start for sure. Um, I would look at your onboarding and make sure that you have a very streamlined onboarding system in place that um, it can be as simple as just a welcome email and then a couple emails just to let people know what your expectations are, what their expectations should be and what the next steps are. And that really helps tee up that client experience to um, make sure that it's stellar from day one because their first impression is huge, right? As we all know that. So I would definitely take a look at that, that client onboarding process. Um, and with that, from your lead generation, you know, you can really help free up your time just by making sure that data is seamless from wherever you're collecting those leads, that that data is coming into your CRM, wherever your CRM is, um, and that you're collecting the right data because anything that somebody tells you, you can then use it for personalization farther down the road, assuming that you're collecting good data, right? Because that's the basis of what everything is based off of. Yeah. So would you say that then considering like the end in mind is really worth Oh, totally. Yeah. 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 I'm a full believer of begin with the end in mind of what are you trying to accomplish? You know, even if it's those baby steps, but figure out which piece of it you want to accomplish. And then we can work backwards from there to say, okay, you need these things in place to get to that goal. Yeah. Cause I think that like when, like, I know that you have your show, which is the seven figure builder show. And so you're, they're obviously thinking about that seven figures. So they're wanting to actually okay. achieve that next level. And so what are some of the things that entrepreneurs actually forget or don't even think about when it comes to that next level growth? I would say a sales funnel is a big one because you may have a landing page in place that you're doing a singular sale but you can tack on upsells without being obnoxious. Like we've all been in those sales funnels that you feel like you can't get out of. You don't yeah. want to be that person, but you can easily add on additional streams of revenue just by adding an upsell, adding an order bump, adding something that would bring additional value to whatever that initial purchase is. Um, so that's a huge one. Um, another one is affiliate marketing where people oftentimes don't think about that, but you, you want referrals, right? So there are very um, streamlined ways that, you know, I or somebody can help you add that onto your platform. It may actually be baked into your platform and you might not know about it. Um, like if you're on a Kajabi platform or something like that, there are ways to upgrade your account to then enable an affiliate program that's already baked in. Um, so there may be very simple ways to do that and to bring in those word of mouth referrals and just build your community very quickly um, through something as, as simple as an affiliate program. Mm, yes, my goodness, you're so right. Like I think it's some of those things that those extra income streams that are already part of what we already do, right? It's 
systems we already use. It's people that we already connect with. Like there's so many different ways to build out those income streams without even realizing it. And I think that often we, we think that if we're going to build another income stream, we have to build another business or another side of the business, but it's not actually the case, right? Right. No, you can add on products and definitely build in those income streams there or just follow up services or add on additional levels of service. Again, just working through that funnel, if that's you know something that makes sense for your line of business. Um, another one that comes to mind is if you have appointments in your business and you find that people aren't showing up, you know, a lot of us use Calendly, for example, for our systems that, you know, we use that to schedule appointments with our clients, whether it's sales calls or whatever you're doing or podcast calls. Um, but there are very easy ways to add on automated reminders, both email and text, which are invaluable for getting people to actually show up to your appointments. So I know a lot of people struggle with that. And then you feel like you need to get that many more leads and that many people through your funnel. When in reality, people are busy and they forget <laughs> The more you can help them, you know, by reminding them, they will be very much appreciative. I know I am one as well that, you know, I get tied up and those reminders are huge for, for helping me show up where I need to be. Oh, a hundred percent. I totally agree. Even like I was saying to a client the other day, she has a masterclass coming up and I was like, okay, what's your pre-email sequence? And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, you need to do a pre-email sequence in this day and age. People sign up to maybe your masterclass three weeks ago. They've completely forgotten that they have wanted to actually be a part of that. They've forgotten why. And mm -hmm. they probably are super busy. I'm exactly the same. If I don't get a text message or a reminder, and if it's not in my calendar, there's no way I'm showing up. Like it's, yeah, I even said to someone else the other day, like, can you please send me a calendar request so it's in my calendar? Because that's how I work. Like I need to run off a calendar. So it's, that's so cool. And I actually, it's so funny you say that because the only the other day I jumped into Calendly because I only use Calendly for a couple of different things and realized that they have the text message option. I didn't even know. I love that. it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I was like, I know. turn on, turn on, turn on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's hugely, hugely helpful. And I have like a hundred percent show up rate for my podcast and which is amazing, but I attribute it to that because I have the reminders, the personalized reminders in there because I know I forget and I know everybody else is crazy busy. So the other thing is if you don't have them, you don't stay at you know, on somebody's mind yeah. that when they do finally remember, they're now having to reevaluate in their mind. Okay. Is this worth my time? Whereas if you remind them periodically and say, hey, don't forget a week out, you know, three days out, 24 hours out, they've now prepped in their mind, okay, I committed to this, I need to show up to this instead of, oh, crap, I have another commitment, you know, is this worth it? Or do I need to bag it and, you know, go do whatever else I was thinking I need to do? Yeah, 100%, 100%. If there's a time, you know, lapse in between their booking and actually showing up, you're so right. And I actually really liked those text reminders with you as well, because even with the time difference, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah I'm on time because it's in an hour. Like I know when yeah. that's happening. Yeah. Yeah, hugely. Yeah. And the time zone helps tremendously. I love that as well because we're across the world from each other, but yet we can connect. So it's fantastic. Yeah. So good. So I'd love to know just with your experience with working with women in business and helping them, you know, get really clear on their data, what what data do you think is most important to track? Um, <laughs> as much as you can without being creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you like um, it. <laughs> uh, well no and and I have a love-hate relationship with all of this and quite you know uh, transparency like I am very big on collecting information that people are willing to provide to me and I love creating that personalized you know high touch experience with my clients so to that I would say as much as you can um starting with of course their first name i would say their business name anything that is near and dear to their heart you know if they're um yeah whatever is close to their heart because that's what's going to resonate with them um you don't want to be saying hey i know you live at xyz address like you don't want to cross that creepy line and we're always you know riding that creepy line and you don't want to do that because that's how you instantly lose trust with your clients so that's where i say i have a love hate relationship but you know it's the more that you can use it to connect with your clients while continuing to build their trust you know the more beneficial it is for your business yeah nice and i think there's also like you like like you said a creep line <laughs> where <laughs> there's also like being mindful of like what you're asking for too because like yeah. Some people will literally go, oh, that's, I'm not answering that question. And then just actually jump out of giving you yeah. any information. Is there a way Absolutely. to overcome that? 
I would just think if, is it truly relevant to the experience? Do I really need to have this information? And is it a trust building exercise to your point? You know, they'll instantly bounce if you're asking for my social security number or whatever, you know, something is that's too personal. Um, but just think of how it ties in with that experience, that customer journey all the way through it's relevant and you can communicate to the client how it's relevant, you know, then yes, it's something you want to communicate. If you really struggle on saying why I need this data, then maybe you want to skip it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So what would you say some of the benefits are from that you see from tracking your data that not everyone realizes is a benefit? Um, well, one of the hidden ones that I think are there with automation is it forces us to establish a clear and concise and repeatable process. So much of our processes live in our heads. And so we know when we get a client, we need to do, you know, these five things, but we may not really have, you know, made it as clear cut for ourselves, or there may be steps that we miss or things that we forget. And so when we go to automate something, it forces us to then map it out and say, okay, these are the steps I want. This is where I can enhance the experience and make it even better for my clients. And you can add it on to that. Um, but I think just that structure and having that put in place is hugely beneficial. Um, and then seeing how those processes tie together and where those connection points are, where, you know, you may collect something over here at the beginning of the process, and then you can use it farther down the road. Um, like I do that constantly through my journey with my clients from day one, all the way through everything goes into my CRM. So I'm very strategic at the things that I'm talking to people about and the data that I'm asking them for and that they're providing, because ultimately if it all goes into one place, I have that clear picture of my client and it really helps me better understand my client and be able to serve them in a higher way. And do you see that obviously then impacting marketing results and things like that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It makes a huge difference in the marketing results and just that relevance to the customer experience in that moment of time that you can, you know, there are different um, logic points and hooks that you can hook into in that journey. If there are things that you know about a client, like just as simple as like my, my whole system is automated behind the scenes for my podcast where people come in and they, you know, I ask them to fill out a form, which then gives me information about them. I then send them to a um, calendar, which you experience to then sign up, but all of it's automated behind the scenes. So I don't have to do any of it, but all of it goes into that one simple, one single location where, um, you know, people, I have all that information and I can be more um, real time with my clients because I know everything that they've told me at that moment. So yeah, absolutely. It makes a huge difference in your results. Amazing. And oh, I love me a workflow. Like one of the <laughs> workflows are the best. And I think it's something that does, it really makes the experience so much better for your clients. And I think sometimes people worry about it being too robotic or too, you know, not personalized, but there are so many personalizations that you can make, right. That make all the difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No. And I've had clients that have told me over and over again, they really enjoy the experience because they know what to expect. I've made it easy for them. And I think that's something that we forget is the more, the easier we can make it for our clients to work with us, the more they're going to want to work with us. Like I've worked with billion dollar companies and their mantra, their mission was to make it easier to work with them because they forget that the client you're, you're putting up barricades in front of yourself if you're not making it easy to work with you. A hundred percent. Oh my goodness. We need to like shout that from the rooftops. I think <laughs> so many people make it so hard just to yeah. say yes to the next step. And I think that the hard thing is that I think that we get too stuck in like, oh, I'm sell selling or I'm being too salesy or pushy when actually it's like, you just need to think about what that next step is and what the headspace is when they're in that energy. So then they can easily make that next step. Like it's amazing how many businesses make it so hard to buy from them or to work with them because of all the barriers or because of all the loops they make you jump through. It's just, <laughs> I see that so much. Absolutely. I know I ran across it myself with a, a company. I was trying to re-sign up for a video service that I had, but I had canceled it before. And there was absolutely no way for me to re-sign up for the thing that I'd already purchased before. And I'm looking everywhere just to click buy and there's nothing. So I ended up going to their competitor and it was super simple. And I pull up one page and I'm like, purchase, I'm like done, you know, and I ended up jumping to their competitor because of it. You know, I wanted the service and they weren't going to help me. 
right? Can easily lose a customer so quickly, so quickly. So when you think you have a client that is like considering obviously getting all of this tech sorted for themselves, what do they need to have in place or what should they be looking at first before they reach out and ask for help? A goal. Uh, again, begin with the end in mind. What do you actually want to accomplish and what are your stumbling blocks? Um, what I like to do with people when I first meet with them is I talk to them, you know, I hear what their pain points are, what are their blocks, what are their goals, what's their vision, like just to understand what is the big picture that they're working towards. And then we can work from there working backwards to okay, this is what you want to accomplish. This is where you, you know, what we need to do to get there. Um, but you have to start with a goal in mind. So I would definitely get clarity on that. Make sure you have a singular focus that you want to accomplish. And then the rest is easy. Like we can put things in place to get you there. But the hardest part, I think, is just getting that goal. Yeah. And I also think that it's also, they're not really sure what their customer journey is. Like they maybe haven't considered it before, or they are not really sure what they want their client journey to be. So there's that space of like, I'm not really sure of, of how to even go about this, right? Yeah. And a lot of it has just grown organically and we change things over time as we are continuing to modify and grow and add new offers. And that's okay. I mean, it's an organic process and that's how we get better. But that's where, again, if you write it down for yourself and take that time to map out those steps, you can see, okay, these are the steps, but then it takes a weird turn, you know, like I need to bring it back to something logical. And so it makes sense to my clients and then we can, you know, build it out and make it easier. Because often I find as well that there is actually a process that they follow, but they just don't realize that they're following a process. Like it's all in their head. Like you said, like you just got to get it out of your head and onto paper right. because there is actually a process. So you just don't realize that you're following or even would you say like the other highlighter could be like when there's problems? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they start to notice when there's things that go wrong in their business and that's when they've yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that helps identify what that goal needs to be is what are the blockers that you're you're um, coming across. Um, and also, I would say one of the most important things that so many people miss is asking for feedback and make that an automated process that you don't even have to think about it. Because so often we don't want to ask for that feedback because it could be hurtful and it could take it personally. And, you know, it's, it's so incredibly vital to the success of your business in making that a continual process that every time you interact with that client and you've delivered something for that client, whether it's a service, a product, whatever, that you ask for that feedback. And if they don't give you negative feedback, awesome, it's a win, right? And you help reinforce the positive processes that you have. If you do ask for feedback and it's not stellar, well, then that's an area that you can improve so that all your other customers have an even better experience. So I think mm -hmm. we need to detach ourselves from the personal, um, taking it personally and just look at it as a case for, you know, continual improvement of our business and just being able to serve our customers that much better. But that helps identify those problems and helps um, preserve your reputation and it helps grow your business and helps the positive referrals. Like there's nothing but good that can come out of that. If we can get out of our own way and actually ask our clients how we can improve and make things better. hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think it's one of those things that needs to be a part of your growth process because without that feedback, you can't grow. And I actually often get annoyed when I don't get negative feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds bad, but I remember like at my last retreat, uh, all the ladies were giving feedback. And then I also asked them to fill out like an anonymous feedback form so that I could get real truth of like, okay, what would they want to change? What would they want to improve next time? What's something that they liked? What's something that they didn't like? Like really asking for that feedback. And I literally was like afterwards going, I, I, I want the negative feedback. I want to <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> like there's got to be something I can improve. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good problem to have. But, you know, you want their, their true transparent feedback too. You don't want just the, you know, pat on the back and saying you did a good job. Like you're 100%. actually looking to improve. Yeah. And I think sometimes women are like, oh, I don't want to say anything bad. And I'm like, no, I want you to tell me. Right. <laughs> um, and I think sometimes as well, like in the, in the past for me, when it comes to asking for that feedback, some of my clients have come up with the most incredible ideas that I would have never had that I'm like, I'm so glad that you shared this with me. Or it was a piece of negative feedback that tweaked something within me that helped me come up with a solution that I would, again, never have come up with without that feedback. So there's so much gold in, our, in the feedback, but you're right. We need to disconnect ourselves from that and not take it personally so we can learn from it and grow from it for sure. 
Yeah, that and just looking at it as market research. Like we're always looking at ways to serve our clients better. So put it in that light. Don't look at it as, am I doing a good job or a bad job? It's just truly market research and being able to hear what your clients want in their own words. So yeah. I think that's just vital in every business. Love it, love it. So I'd love to know when it comes to like gaining more time back, what are some simple tweaks that we could share with everyone now that they should start looking at that they could make that you notice? Like sometimes I'm sure that you work with clients and you're like, oh my God, why do you not have this in place? Or <laughs> is this one of the most simplest things that you could do today that would make a big difference. Yeah. Onboarding is a huge one. There's so many people have just a manual, completely manual onboarding process that you can streamline and just automate so much of it and still have that personal touch. So I would absolutely look at your automation um, for your onboarding process. Um, the uh, lead generation is another one. So I would definitely think about how you can streamline your lead generation process and make sure that you're not having to manually copy and paste, that your data is not getting stuck somewhere, or you're just counting your leads um, and not actually doing something with them. Um, that's a huge one that I see both from small companies to massive, massive, you know, fortune 500 companies as they do the same darn thing that they're just looking at, oh, we have X number of people sign up. Well, okay, great. What are you doing with it? Like mm -hmm. they're just growing stagnant and you're not doing anything to build that relationship when email itself has a 43 to one for turn on investment right now in 2023, that for every dollar you spend in email marketing, you'll get a $43 return on that effort, which nothing else is going to give that to you. Yeah, it's huge. So I would say definitely look at your email marketing and we feel like it's overplayed so often because our inboxes get flooded with just crap that we don't necessarily want. But it is hugely beneficial to your audience, especially if you're telling them things that bring them value and help them with their business. So I would definitely look at those things. Absolutely. Because if they're signing up, they actually want what you've got, right? Like yeah. if they're signing up, they're giving away their email address, which is not something that's simple anymore, right? Like I think that people don't give away their email address easily or frivolously anymore. So when they are giving away, they want to hear from you. And I think that one of the things is like, we are worried about filling their inbox, but if you're ghosting them, you're it's worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And the other key is with your social media, we're doing so much on social media to market ourselves, but the actual goal of what we do on social media is and should be to get them off of social media, to have them give you their email address. Because if you get locked out of Facebook or Instagram or whatever tomorrow, if your account gets hacked, which happens all the time, like you literally have nothing. So you could have, you know, 5 billion followers and you're locked out of your account. You're starting over at zero. Mm. So it's critical that we're actually driving people off of social media to a lead magnet, to something that we can actually exchange information for their email address so that we have that as something that we can use to market and communicate to them. Um, and then look at those campaigns on how you're actually going to do that to build that relationship. But I think that's a huge gap in so many businesses that we spend so much energy in our social media, in our social media marketing, um, and don't actually take them off of social media. Or spend so much time money getting the lead and then doing nothing. Yeah. with it. <laughs> Yeah, a hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'd love to know if there's anything that you notice with the difference between say entrepreneurs that are say at that six figure mark and they're wanting to get to that seven figure. What are, what are some things that seven figure business owners do that six figure business owners don't? They realize the importance of using the data that they have and scaling using automation. I think so many people just uh, look at their business based off a necessity of like, what do I have to do to survive instead of looking ahead at how am I going to scale? And time is our most valuable thing that we have. It's very finite. And we all have the same 24 hours every single day, you know, from the biggest CEO to the smallest child, like we, you know, we all have the same amount of time. So how we choose to use it is up to us. But um, I think looking at your time strategically, instead of just getting stuck in the busy work and the busyness of your business, you've got to actually look at how to be strategic with that time and how to leverage the systems and being able to invest in the systems to free up your time so that you have more, more of that time. I love that. It's really shifting from that employee mindset to a CEO mindset and actually considering like what's the outcome, what's the result we're wanting to achieve rather than just 
making time or just, you know, working nine to five and just doing mm. all the busy, busy, busy things, it's actually much more strategic and thinking about it in a completely different way. I love that. Absolutely. So good. Amazing. Oh my goodness. This has been so good. Is there anything that you feel like we haven't touched on just yet that you think that business owners really need to know when it comes to automating or scaling their business with tech? I would say just get started, you know, think about where your pain points are and then how you can alleviate them. We don't have to spin our wheels and just keep doing the same thing over and over again, because that's all we know. Um, and I know, you know, we think about it with our, our branding and our um, mission and all that stuff that we bring coaches in to help us reframe that mindset and, you know, to be able to think bigger. And I think so often we don't think that help is there without getting crazy expensive agencies to come in and help us. There's help there for you that can help you scale your business and to free up that time. And you just need that expertise to be able to help you grow and get to that next level. Um, you don't have to keep spinning your wheels anymore. Mm, absolutely. So on that note, can you share with us how we can find you, what we can book in with you? What, what's the next step? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So you can find me at sevenfigurebuilder.com. And I actually offer a free assessment for anyone who's interested in getting started with this. So we can absolutely talk for free and, you know, get a better understanding of where your needs are and then help you create that strategy. And then I do also help you with the implementation. So that's a lot, a big question a lot of people have is they don't want to get stuck with just a fancy plan, right? Because that doesn't help anybody. So um, yeah, you can definitely hop on my website. You can find me on all the socials, on Facebook, on Instagram. I'm at Seven Figure Builder. Um, easy to find there. And um, yeah, I look forward to connecting with your listeners. And like I said, you, the help is there. You can definitely move farther in your business than you ever think you could. Amazing, Julie. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing with us all of your expertise. This has been such a fun chat. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.